All right, you have that recording. Good evening, everybody. I am Severin. I am from Barony Beyond the Mountain BBM out of the East Kingdom. And what my class is today is to show you how to make the barra tape uh, that was developed uh, in the late 1500s by Juan de Alcega. And um, yes, he is uh, Spanish. And yes, it is a Spanish tape. But since at that time, Spain was also controlling a lot of Italy and a lot of the Italian fashion came from the Spanish fashion uh, on that, uh, just a lot more comfortable. Um, I don't see why this wouldn't uh, tie into it. Um, what it, let's go back uh, uh, a couple years prior to that to uh, other Italians uh, on that. And uh, they were called Romans. And the Romans basically have developed our way of measuring things. Foot was a soldier's foot. Then one pace was a yard. An inch was, they said it was a thumb but it was actually the fingers uh, on that. And that turned into what eventually became as the L, E-L-L. -L. And the L was different all through Europe. Uh, some places it was as much as 72 inches as we know it. Um, others, it was a yard and a half. Uh, it came down to in Great Britain, uh, since Elizabeth, Elizabeth's time, it was 45 inches. They didn't have a rule on it till much later past our period, but that 45 inches is still held today and it's usually called the tailor's or a weaver's L. You go into a fabric store, go buy fabric, usually it's 44, 45 inches for it. Now, of course, there's different sizes, but that's the common on there. Well, Juan figured out that what they were using in measuring equated to a different measurement. He found that four grains of barley put side by side, which barley is the one grain that is almost constantly the same, side by side, made just his thumb. And when he measured that out, it came to 35 and 34 inches, not 36. So he worked out his uh, tape that the tailor started using off of that. What is good for, what that particular tape is good for is uh, to figure out your fabric. But what we're going to do is we're going to make it a personal tape. Everybody's tape is going to be slightly different because it's to their person. So one young lady next to the next young lady to the third young lady all take the same measurement, same body part measurement. They'll have different measurements when you, they hold the tapes up aside of each other. But when they take the single pattern that has letter codes on it, they will be able to make a pattern and a, a piece of garb that works to their body by doing it. Let me explain. The four, four basic tapes, there's no proof anywhere as to what amount of tapes the uh, wand developed as far as what he used for his uh, customers or on that. Um, what I use, what was uh, guided me as a gentleman that is known in the SA as Jose Master, Jose de Madrid. He has a number of books out. And his name is Matthew Nagy. And it's the Modern Maker series. He goes into how 
this is used. And he figured the best way to do these tapes is to have a chest tape. Yeah, yeah. A chest tape, a waist tape, the true waist, hips, and then length. Length is your height. Um, now there's a little codicil that goes with that that he and I discussed. I shrank over two inches since I started this. And the problem is, is when we discussed it, I said, the only thing is, is my legs didn't shrink. My arms didn't shrink, but my body did from the neck to, to my hips. That shrink compression happens when you get older. So you might need to make a, th a fifth tape for the torso. I'm gonna go myself with just the regular, my height. And then when I do any arms or legs, because that's all it is, I'm just gonna add the extra distance in that to calculate it out. Because when you do his patterns or any patterns of these and you make the pattern, there's so many more configurations that you need to do in divisions along the length of the body than you do for the arm. So um, those are the four tapes that we're, we're only gonna do two. We'll practice two uh, tonight. And I'll give you how to you know, figure out most of them uh, on here, which is the easier part uh, to it. Uh, the tricky part is getting the length tape for you. And I've got a couple ideas on that. But going back to, uh, back into ancient times, there was a builder by the name of Vitruvius who decided, who was designing um, buildings, uh, churches and such uh, way back in, in ancient times. And he wanted to have men walk in the hallway and through the arches of a doorway, one going one way, one coming back and never touch each other, never have to turn sideways on that. So he developed a system on that, that Leonardo da Vinci has drawn a picture, a, 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 a sketch of, and then listed all the different parameters of it and it's called the Vitruvian man. I'm sure everybody has seen that where it's the, the man with the uh, arm straight out, up on an angle, the leg, uh, you know, four legs for him. Because your height normally equals distance from tip to tip. Half your height, center body to tip. For men, a quarter of the height, fingertip to elbow. Women, unfortunately, because of um, uh, childbirth and, and having to carry babies, evolution has extended their forearm just that little bit longer that you can't use that. But if you have two people to get your height tape, your length tape on that, if you have a, a friend that can do it, you put your arm out then put the tape on the end of your uh, long finger, bring it back to the center of your back, and that's where they'll make their second mark, and that's where you have your beginning and end of your tape on that. Now, what we measure on that, just like most other measurements, chest, hips, the largest part of the hips over the largest part of the derriere, but the waist is the true waist, right below the rib cage. It is not the New England waist where it's at the top of the hips, and it's not uh, the regular men's waist around at the belly button. It is the true waist. So this is that's why this is so high. That's why when you do doublets, even women doublets, they seem so short, and they only have skirts about two or three inches on them, and they seem. They don't seem to cover much, 
but the pants are all the way up here. Your breeches and that for men are all the way up here. The skirts are up here where the doublet comes down and covers. So that um, that's how that's how you get your, your different measurements from there. Now in Periods of Fashion, Janet Arnold, she does go into discussing about the L in the back section of her uh, works here and um, describes uh, about a lot of the L that I had have already mentioned uh, on that. And the Taylor's Pattern Book by Wanda Alcega. Um, this was the first ever pattern book written by a tailor and uh, one was a master tailor, but he was also a mathematician. That's how he came up with this whole thing of the barricade on that. <clears throat> and the queen of Spain gave him permission to write a book for the other tailors. After that, um, there were others that came up, uh, Braille, Bergen, um, the Taylor's book uh, from Sarto on that. And uh, they came after after his on there. Uh, so if you get a chance to get this or even take a look at it, have a friend on that, um, it'll go through a number of the patterns in the back here. And when you look at the look at a pattern, a men's or a ladies, let me grab a ladies. Here's one of the ladies patterns down at the bottom here. Okay, this one here. Let me get a little closer. And what you hopefully you can see, you're gonna see letter designations on it. Down the down the doublet front, it says Q, Q, Q. Others say S around the neck um, and there's you know all the diff different designations there are a number of designations that divide up the barricade on that and as we go through the barricade I will um, I'll bring those up and I have as a video aid a barricade that as we go I'm going to mark them off and I'm going to put the letter code to it so that you can see it, not only so so that you can see it hanging as to how it is uh, the top and the bottom on that as we do our tape so that you can look at your tape and say, okay, that's where it's supposed to be. You know, I have this wrong, whatever. Um, I get, uh, uh, you can use any, any type of non-stretch tape. Now the tape that I have here, um, is a woven uh, binding type tape. It does not uh, have much stretch. And best way to seal that and uh, you know uh, shrink it is using steam, but with your iron about two inches above it so that it shrinks. Problem is, is if you use the iron and, and steam it and you're stretching it with the iron, when it relaxes, it will get smaller. And unfortunately, if it shrinks a quarter of an inch and you've got five seams plus the front on that six now, that quarter of an inch is now an inch and a half of shrinkage to your um, outfit that you were hoping to wear. And all of a sudden you're sitting there and you can't button it um, or lace it use hooks, whatever you use for it. That. So that's the way you, you can stretch, uh, uh, steam the tape so that it will stay. So what we do is we start off, take your tape, give yourself about a, about a hand, hands length, I give a little bit more, fold it, Hold it like this, so it's even up on the edges, and crease it and, and do a good finger press on it. 
because you're going to draw in that trough of the crest. Severin, can you raise your hands? We're, we're not seeing. I'm sorry? We're not seeing your hands. Can you raise them up so we can see what you're doing? Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Let me look. Uh, let me let me do something here. Hold on. Okay, as we work closer this way, you'll be able to see see what I'm doing. When I get the get anything from behind me, I'll bring it out to you on here. So you take your tape, give yourself a hand or so, fold it in half so that it's nice and even. So you end up with a very straight uh, crease on that. You give yourself a good crease, good thumb pressing. Now, I'm hoping that you all uh, read that I suggest not only the tape, but a black, fine, fine point, Sharpie marker, really fine, not the thick ones. You want as, as fine as you can, a permanent marker. This is the ultra fine point and a red one. Now, we're going to do all the black first. And then we'll go to the red. Now, there's a, a reason that uh, we do it. I do it this way. Um, Matthew does it this way. Does it this way in his book? Is at a glance, you can see what you what you're doing, what measurement you're going to need because you're going to divide this up eventually to getting the full length, the um, half quarters. Uh, thirds, six sixteenths, uh, thirty seconds, and forty eighths. So this is going to divide all the way down. Each tape is going to have the same designations on it, but their distances will be different because your chest size to the waist or to hips is going to be different, and guaranteed the length is going to be different than any one of them. So we start out with this. You draw a straight, you draw a line right in that crease, right across. Turn it so the point, the bottom of the, of the tape is towards you, and below that line, you do what they call the ought, a zero with a line through it. Let me get the big copy here for you just to show you. So what you've done is you've taken that tape, you've folded it. All right, I have lines drawn already, so I don't need to fold it. You fold that tape, you now draw in the black marker, that line across. And mark it with an font like that. All the rest of the tape is either still on your, uh, your roll here like I do or if you have cut some off, it's, it's sitting there the rest of it. Now I gotta turn the, turn the camera back up a second because I gotta stand to show you this. Like I said, I'm gonna be doing this with you. So I'm actually doing my measurements also for this. And that is why, like I said, I do not have my doublet on. So you take your tape like that and go around the chest. Make sure you get it up across the shoulder blades behind you. And cross it in front. Now, what you're going to do is where that line crosses in front, 
to the tape, the other tape, or the other end of the tape, sorry. Just gonna put a dot there. Cause then you're gonna fold it off of that once you get it back from around you. And let me put that camera back down to in front of us. Okay, so at one end, I'm gonna turn this around so it's the same way as what we're doing. So at this end here, we have the art on there and we just put a dot on the other end. So we go to find that and that's your other end of the tape. So you fold that again, giving a good thumb, good pressing. Draw your line. Now, this here is all the rest of your tape. This part is still uh, attached to my roll. You turn the tape up. And you put a large B above that. Let me do it on the big one so you can see what I'm talking about. So here's here's the aught. Right? Here's the aught. Now you're going to the other end of the tape where that dot was. And now you're gonna. That dot was there. Now you draw the line across that trough where you just pressed it and you put a B. That's one barrel. That is your chest size or your waist size or your hip size um, length. Same thing. The divisions is where it gets fun. Now, I tell people, give yourself another two, two and a half handfuls before you cut off that one because we'll deal with just the one. So we cut that off. I can put that away for right now. And there goes my pen. All right, the reason I leave this much here it's because you want to label what you're doing. You want to label it with what it is. I label the date because you make something for somebody and then they come back and say, oh, this doesn't fit me right anymore. You can look at, their, at the tape that you have for them and say, oh, we haven't done a measurement in a year and a half. So we need to take more measurements. But how do you know who it is? And that's why I always put my name at the end. On the opposite end, on the art end, all right, I don't need to know whose it is, but sometimes I like to know what tape this is. So I'll put the letter C or H for hip. W for waist, L for length, just so I can spot it. Now, Matthew also gave me another hint real quick. Uh, uh, nice little thing to do. He says, what you do with the tape then? Down at the bottom here. And I have it right here. And you can do this then once you get done practicing with them. Put a safety pin in it because that's your start. You, if you're a regular, you use a regular uh, yardage tape or anything, it's, it's got that metal end on it uh, for it. So well, all it does is give it a little bit of weight on that when you're working on it. Are we, um, are we all together at this time yet?
still. Anybody? I think every everybody is muted. Um, is there a, where you can click to raise a hand? Nope. Okay. We, we haven't had any questions yet other than about a book, but I shared it in the chat. Um, nothing, nothing else raised. Feel free if you do have a question at this time to unmute yourself or throw it in the chat and I can ask it for you. Well, I like it that I don't have a lot of questions. I just hope I'm not confusing people that they go, oh, I, 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 I'm, I'm lost on this. Because if I, if I go too fast, or I do happen to lose you and you want. Um, Severin, it's very clear so far. I'm sorry? It's very clear so far. I think I'm, everybody's probably following you fine. I am. Good, good, good. All right. Now we're going to do some of our folds. And this gets fun. With the. I always put my barrel to my right hand, to my left hand side. And I don't know why, that's just me on that. What you do is you bring your ought up, line it up with your B, line it up with your barra. And at that fold, make a crease. Again, with the black marker, draw your line. Now, what I always tell, the reason I do it that way is because then when I turn around and put my designation for that piece, which is, uh, it actually, I, 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 it was in Spanish and I looked it up and it's pretty much the same thing as it's the media in Italian. And what you want to do with the black um, lines and the black designations, all the black designations are capital letters. And except and everyone goes above the line except for the ought. It's just easier to spot that one when you're trying to find it. And the reason I say this is because you're going to have a couple that might look similar. But um, you want you want to put them above, and when we get to the red ones, we'll we'll discuss that when we get there. Okay, I just put my end there. So what I did was took my zero to my barra to my B, folded it. Did a line in the trough. And marked it with a capital M. So now you've just divided your barrel into two sections. So this is the middle, so you have halves. Next one, keep your barrel at the top. Pull the tape so that your media meets it. And you make a crease. And draw your line. I'm gonna have you draw the other, other line that goes along with this so that you can spot and see what I'm talking about when I do it. Now put your media on your left-hand side and bring your ought up to it. And make a crease.
and draw that in. I'm real careful at trying to draw these in because if you get, get it, that you slightly angle it, you can end up changing your pattern a bit that where you don't want to. So now you had halves with the media. So this here is your quarters. And that would be quattro for in Italian, quattro in Spanish. So your first one from the O to the M to the media, you draw a Q. So here I would have my Q. There's the art, your Q, media. Now we go up to the other side where we've drawn the line. Halfway between media and barra. And that designation is three cues. Okay. So that is tre, uh, uh, tre quatri, three quarters. Have to get mine on my tape. I can't ever get it on the tape in one, so I either do it on an angle I'll do two up and one down just so that I know like this two up and one down. I don't know if you can see it if I'm getting close enough or not. We can see it. That was very helpful. So now you have quarters. And I'm sure everybody knows the next one is going to be eights. Now we only work on the bottom half of the tape. We don't do anything up on the upper half at this time again. So we take the ought and bring that up to the first quarter, first cue. Crease that up. Mark it. And above that line, you make an O. No line through it, no tail for a Q, and a single O. Going over to the paper. You've got your I, then you got an O, then your Q. And that is eight octavo or octavo, not, not with the C. <laughs> O T T A V O. What I'll do here, I'll, because we're starting and getting into it,
in Italian, Ottavo, your quattro, media, tre quattro, and barrel. And there's the barrel. That's how it would will split up. Octavo is the last one that we do with the black. All the rest are going to be done with the red. And just a quick note here, they're all lowercase letters when we do these. And these are going to go below the line. It just seemed to be, it, it, it was how, um, uh, Matthew uh, just showed me, and then I saw it in his books, and I followed it, and then I got lost, and he showed me again on how to do it, and that's how I learned, and it works out this way. It's easier to spot. That's the whole thing. When you're measuring, and you're flipping the tape around, and you're taking, and you're doing someone's measurements, um, other body, or actually, you're not going to be doing their measurements from their body. You're going to take, you're going to do two lines. You're going to do ot and vera. After that, you divide it up. They don't even have to be there. As long as you know, oh, this is going to be their chest. Okay, I'm going to do a hip. I'm going to do a waist. And you get the ot and the vera on all of them, and you mark the tape as to what it is, they can leave. You can go from there without having to worry that you're not gonna get it, get it right. As long as you have those, if you make a mistake in it and you say, I gotta do it over, no problem. Just put another tape on it, mark out and barra and start all over again. Your folds, are, your folds come as, as, as you go. And I have done folds where I've taken the ought to the wrong spot and realized that after I was done that I was at the wrong spot. Now to do these, we're starting with thirds. Thirds are a little difficult. Sometimes you have to, as my mother used to say, yokes it. Other times, you might get it right on. You grab, take the barrel tape between thumbnail and your finger. Grab the other side of it, same thing. Stand it up and hook your middle finger around it, around the tape. Drop it down and hook it again. This is the easiest way I found to do it. And then you just keep pulling, spreading that out. So you get, I almost did it. I almost turned around and stopped at the zero at the, at the uh, eight there, which is easy enough to do. And here's where you have to yoke it, as like I said, my mom would say. What you want to do is you want to have this fold, this fold here, underneath your barrel line, and the other fold, the other end, on top of your aught. Now I'm a little bit off, so I have to sit and play with it. And I will do that with you here. Let's see. And it sometimes is, you have to move, you move a little bit of an eighth of it and you went too far. And I moved just a little bit of an eighth and I got it. And now give yourself a good thumb pressing. I'll wait till you catch up only because I know how, how that is is for difficulty. Um, I've seen people turn around and lay it on the table, flip, flip, and boom, and got it right on. 
I haven't been able to do that. So I'll give it a couple, uh, give it a minute or two. Those who have gotten there, no problem, relax. Get out your red marker. You can put your black marker away. I always do red and black only because they're the easiest ones to find these type of markers. You can get professional markers that uh, professional uh, drawing markers uh, for artists uh, that have uh, permanent ink in them also. And you can do all types of colors if you want. You can do purple and green. Um, I don't suggest yellow on anything only because you're working on white here and that makes it a little harder to work with. So I think we should be caught up and everybody's kind of yokes that into place. Now we have one side that has the crease where you want to be able to, you can put the line in it because you're in the valley. So you draw that line. Two ways you can do this one. You can freehand across the top of the, 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 the hill. You can hold it back over, keeping that hill there. And then in between your fingers, run it across again, that's almost freehanding it. Or what I do is I will put a dot right on the edge for that. So I know where I'm folding it, turn it around and fold it on the other side. All right. Severin, we had a question from Luca, if you could show how to do that fold again. Luca, could you specify which fold? I think I know what they're they're talking about the full full fold um to get the three way, right? Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> it's okay. Trust me, it took me a while to figure this out. Um grabbing the one and because you're gonna, you wanna work with that. So when you put it down, all right, your thumb is right there. And if you're right on target, that other, that, that the fold underneath will be right at your thumb. So you do your thumb, grab the other side, almost like that, but this one's gonna be loose. Stand it up. It's the only way I can, can say it. You kind of like, Put one hand above the other so that it's standing up so that it comes up from one side over your finger back down all right see how i'm i hoping i'm getting enough there standing it up and now you hook your middle finger so that now hang on it will go below me so you see you have it in thirds already, kind of. At least there's three levels here. That's what you need to do. And you keep sliding your right hand out. As you can see, there, keep moving down. Keep sliding your right hand out until this finger is at the aught. You get that right on. All right now, I didn't get it right on. I was I was off. I had it somewhere like this, and then I played with it till I got that fold there and that fold there right on the lines. So that this fold here is right on on the barrel. If I, you take it down, there's there's the uh, there's the fold. On the other side, it's on top now. So there's the fold, and here's the tail. 
for where your ought is. And that's where you give it a thumb pressing. Like I said, one of them's gonna be, give you the trough, which is, this one gave me the trough. I drew right in that trough. This one here, I turned it, I flipped it around, made a little mark on it and flipped it around, did my thumb pressing and gave my trough. Does that help you? Thank you. I benched to catch myself up now. <laughs> That's okay. So like I said, marking these, these are going to be small letters and they're going to go underneath. So I'm going to face this towards you because I can do, I can write a T. I kind of angle the T. And that's the one closest to the ought. Always do one T first, because if you got it wrong, the other one, you just add another T to it, because this is one third. And in, so this is, this is Terza. This is Terza. You go to the other one, which is, by your QQQ, which is right down from your barra. And that one is two T's. So that is duo terza, or du terza, D-U-D-U-E, du terza. Let me show it you know, on, on, on the big map. So you have your art. And then you have your octavo, quarto, your first terza, media, du terza, tre quarto, and your barrel. Now it's just getting down to some of the smaller measurements. And like I said, now we're only working on, we're only working on the lower half, the lower section of the tape down here. Okay. Now I ask you to put it out on, the, on your table, your work area like this, your terza on your left side, your ought on your right side. Reason being is you have octavo in the center, which is an O, looks like the ought, and quarto, Q, which looks like the O, which looks like the ought. I say this because this is where I've screwed up a number of times. You take your ought, up to Terza. Flatten it down and give yourself your thumb pressing down here. Open that up and draw your line across. Now, since we have thirds, and we just took half of that, that's six. So this is uh, one six and this is Sesta. On the bottom side of that line, the 
the octavo is above it. So on the bottom side of that line, you do an S. And I'm not that good at it. So we have Terza uh, looking on the looking on the big one. So it's larger for you to see. Terza, we fold it in half, and we get the line there. It's one sixth, which is sesta. So now we have aught, octavo, sesta, quarto. And we're not done. We fold it again from the aught to sesta. Again, make a crease and do our line. Rather, let's draw our line. Okay. Now that will be a small D. It's your twelfth your dozen, your dozen designation, Dota, hang on a second, Dota Simino, Dota Simo, um, I think I pronounced that right, so that's twelfth, that's one twelfth of this whole measurement. The last group, Kind of fun. There's the D. So now we have to fill in here. These are going to be technically your in what would be known as your inches. All right. And it's funny. I took the word in the Spanish that they use for this is dedo, D-E-D-O. And I said, okay, what does that mean? And I looked it up and it equated to inch and finger. So I said, all right, well, what is finger in Italian? Detta, D-E-T-A. The next couple marks are going to be labeled that, but we're going to do the lines first before we do the before we do labeling, and um, you'll understand as soon as we do that. Bring your ought up to your D, up to your uh, your dozen mark. How's that? How's that again? Dozano, Dozano in Spanish. Dodecimo, dodecimo in um, Italian. All right. Do that line where you've made that crease. Now that is one half of your uh, 12, so that's 24. But what we're going to do next, we're not going to label it yet. This is a little bit off to what we've been doing. We've been taking the ought to everything as we go. The ought always is part of it, except for here. 
on this one, one line. That line that you just drew, you take up to your D. You match your two red lines together. Let me show you that again. You have your line, no label. You have your D. And now you're going to take that line up, put it on top of the D. And you make a crease. And draw that line in. Now we still don't label it yet. Now we take the art to the first one. Same thing, crease. Draw your line. So you should have something similar to this. The art, the decimal, and three in between. And these should be the same size. I know mine's slightly off. I know I, know I did that. But, and sometimes you look at it, you think it's off, and they're not. They're, 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 they're exact. Now I'll label them by doing it on the large page here so that you can see it. And I'll do it uh, facing you. Let's see if I can see that right. And my name is over top of it. Okay, there's chest. That's because this chest measurement. Here's the art. Here is your D. And we did, we folded that up and we did the first line. Then we took this line to here and we got this one. Then this was brought up to here, just like it had been on along all along, and we got. That one. That's all, what I have on my cloth tape. That's what you should be seeing here on your tape. And as I said, when I went and I uh, said, what does a dado mean? It came up with inch. That's what these designations are. It's an eye. The next one is two eyes. And the last one is three eyes. Now the odd thing is, it's just like in Romans sometimes, that third eye looks like a J. And that's what your lower end is, looks like. Dozens. Twelfths, this is 24s, 48s, and the other one here is 32s, or 16s, 16s, 32s, and 48s on that. All barricades are divided up that it comes down to 48s. If you were to fold this and be able to fold this all the way up, you would get 48 of these in this whole tape. You get six of these, you get eight of these, you get 12 of these. It all works out. There's no fifths, there's no ninths, there's no sevenths in there. It's all even numbers per se. You know, thirds is not an even number, but it's all even, evenly distributed, evenly um, divided on that. I'm going to do my designation here on these because I 
sometimes you can turn around and you do your line first and you end up having to try and squeeze that dot in for the eye in between and you get it on the line and then that's a, a pain. But that is, that's your chest tape. If you did it on your chest or you did it on uh, your test dummy, like I, I could have done it on uh, my Jennifer here. I could have done, done it on my Jennifer and done it here. That, you know, that would have been fine too, but I thought doing it on myself, like you would do it for yourself. Or if you have someone helping you, same thing. I suggest always use um, t-shirt, chemise, uh, a shirt. One that, um, one that you haven't turned around and done a lot of smocking on where you've taken six yards of fabric and brought it down to, um, you know, 36 inches around the shoulders and that stuff for yourself because you will have so much bulk in this area to try and get that. You'll end up having a tape that could be as much as two inches, uh, American, two inches longer than you need it. And just imagine what that's gonna be when you uh, try to do a pattern. Um, I wanna do the next one off my true waist so that you can see. Um, I'll go a little bit faster with it. Deborah, yeah, I have a question. For those of us for whom there's a bit of difference between the supported chest and the unsupported chest, should we worry about that at all? Or should we just go with the unsupported chest? I would say, uh, depending, uh, if you're using bodies yeah. uh, to get to, to support the chest and that, um, and that's the look you want, that's what you want to do. I always suggest your best supported uh, for female best supported bra in that case uh, on that because most of most of your patterns are going to have them supported. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's very helpful. Uh, here's the here's the write up of the different one different. Uh, words and that, uh, what they're called. Like I said, that one I'm having trouble pronouncing. And dado, do dado, trace dado. So it's inch, one inch, one inch, two inch, three inch, basically our data uh, on that. And the reason all of these Letter designations are important, not just the lines, but the letter designations are important. Is the designations on the patterns. Now, Alciga, he gives a lot of good information and you have to read if you can read it, or if you find someone who has read it and translated it, there's different things in there. Um, and they're telling you of what they did with the pattern. I can tell you from experience that if I use Alcega's pattern and I make it and I draw the pattern on my fabric and then go around and make it one dado larger, I don't have it. That's the seam allowance. That's the fold over. It's done because my tape was made to me, and I'm only and I'm only adding that to pull back for seam allowance because that line is where you're actually sewing it. Now, in uh, Virgin, he decide he does it differently. You have to take stuff away from his. But this is all in the verbiage of, of it. But they all use the same letter designations when they do it. 
You just have to read what they want and how they patterned it out on there. Now there is also a, an Italian book out there. Um, if I remember correctly here, hang on, it is Sartre. El Libro del Sarto, the Taylor's book. And it's uh, what I've gone through. I didn't see a lot of patterns like you see in um, uh, Alcigo, where it's an, an, the actual, you're looking at an actual pattern. Where it's, let me get to a doublet. Now these are his originals that they did uh, facsimiles too. Trying to stay away from the horses. He actually had stuff in here that uh, would be for going on on horses. Okay, this is. Uh, this one here is what they call a rope up. It's a long, it's a long woman's gown. Okay. And you have the body, you have the added pieces on it, you have where the sleeves go in. Everything's everything's on there. And the, the letter designations are what determine um, how you're gonna mark that onto your fabric. My words. All right, we'll go to the English. This one here is a men's doublet. Sleeves, front, back, collar. Below it, that's a women's. That's a woman's doublet that you might attach a skirt to or have the skirt separate on that. Again, there, you have the sleeves on here, you have the, the doublet front, which I've drawn up over here, doublet back, collar. Um, most of these have the collar, it's uh, the back section of the collar is built into the back of the doublet. It's not separate that we know of today where you make one collar or a half a collar on each side on that a lot of them have a collar that comes right up and it is part of the back itself and the only pieces you have an extra you have your uh from the um the front to your side to your uh shoulder seam on there and everything fits together and trust me it all fits together it fits together beautifully um I did, I, instead of hand sewing them, I did uh, four doublets, four doublets in a couple of weeks to go to Penza a couple of years ago, using these patterns on there. I did, and I decided I've got to sew it fast. So I got out the sewing machine and did it by a sewing machine. So I did it bag style where you sew them right sides together, turn it inside out and so the little bit of the seam or whatever that you pulled it through, put your uh, sleeves on and there you have it. The way there, these were all done is each individual layer was put on and it was hand stitched on. There's a specific pattern and way that everything was put together. Um, there are other books. Alcides doesn't go into it. Uh, Freya doesn't go, Freya doesn't go into it as to how they're put together. They figure you as a tailor would know how to do that. There are other books out there that do show you how to do that um, and how they are put together. Um, I don't have one down here right now, um, but if you can come across it, it has a doublet on the front. It's a leather doublet pinking in it where they've uh, done stars and everything on it that helps uh, that that book goes into it more and some of the German uh, books go into it more because they do different things 
and they're, they still build off of the same thing that we've done here uh, on that, but their skirt will be part of the part of the doublet back, and then they have half of a seam. So when you bring the skirt up and you put it on, you sew that just that part. It's not fully separated that it's sewn uh, the whole skirt sewn on separate. It's part of the pattern itself. Um, those I can get, I can get those, uh, those book titles and that I have them upstairs. Um, and I can put in uh, the addendum when I get uh, my other stuff in uh, on the link to my handout. Uh, there is a handout that I will be putting in. Uh, hopefully I'll get that all up by tomorrow night. And uh, before uh, this all uh, closes, and you'll be able to get the get the handout on that. Um, but I have to tell you that a lot of my information did come from Master Jose. Uh, he is an expert. I've been sewing for 30 years. He's been studying tailoring for 30, 35 years, something like that. I was doing tunics when he was studying this stuff. Um, so I turn around and I, I bow to him, absolutely bow to him. And there are others um, uh, that are out in the SCA that are fantastic experts on it. Some of them are great to look at because they are customers down in, uh, uh, in Chicago or in LA or in New York uh, where they do costuming and it looks great. Their sewing is different than if you're doing it as medievally as possible hand sewing and that because what you're going to be doing if you do decide to do this is you're making clothing you're not making garb you're making clothing that will stay with you that you'll be able to keep for years i still have some of my first garb from 30 years ago um my the first piece my my uh oldest piece latest period piece that i did was i did um i did a cavalier outfit for my friend's father for her wedding and as far as i know that is still being worn she got married well let's put it this way that's 25 years old um one of our kings has one of my Tudor outfits that he still wears and that I know is 20 years old. There's my pen. So yes, you can do it by machine and make it that, that good. Obviously they do it all the time, every day in factories. Um, I worked in a factory, so I, I know how a lot of this, I knew how a lot of this went together prior to it but I've learned a lot more on how things go. Having studied um, Alsiga, um, Janet Arnold was one of the first that I used for anything on that. And going farther, uh, Matthew Nagy's uh, um, or Master Jose's. So let's, uh, let's go on to doing the waist like i said we'll do the waist and as i'm doing that i'm going to give you the clue to doing uh part of it i gave you for doing um your length tape or height tape um as i said i i shrank so my height is shorter than my arms are or my legs so I have to compensate for that. So I would rather not have to shrink everything down um, if I, it's from uh, an, uh, a tape where I took from my fingertip to my, the back, my center of my back on there or did a quarter for the men's and then just did, did the, other, the, other, uh, quarter, the other half uh, to get uh, half my length uh, on that. Um, because what you do for your length, it is half your height. 
no matter what your height is, it's half your height. A trick that I did was I did my lot. And then I took that and I stuck that on the floor, in the corner, in the crevice, up the wall. Stood up against the wall. The book, you know, like you did, like you used to do with the your your kids if you have kids, um, or your parents did with you to measure your height as you grew. Put that on the wall, kind of stuck out, did a small pencil mark. Took from my aunt on the floor, ran it right up the wall till I got to that, and just put my thumbnail there. Didn't mark it yet because that's my full height now. Brought that down to match with the ought, squeeze that off. And now that was half my height. So that was my barra end. I had my ought, pulled it down. Now I had, had my barra end. Now I could turn around, do my length uh, at my new height of shorter than what I used to be. So I'm gonna stand up, I'm gonna see if, uh, yeah, you can see where we're seeing my chest area here and, and that, so. Yes, okay. we see that fine. I'm sorry? We do see that. We do see that, good. <laughs> You take your tape, I come around the true waist right underneath your rib cage. Easiest way to find that is bend slightly sideways and where that fold is, the upper fold right down from your, you go down your ribs, don't tickle yourself, and right where your ribs end, that's your true waist. You bring it around just like you did before. And now you might be able to see this a little bit easier because now I can get closer. Here's your eye. And yeah, that's where my tape ends. I put my little mark there. And now I can bring it out and fold it on that mark. If you have someone helping you and they can, they can do the full line. I find it's easier um, to even with even with someone helping me, just put a dot there where it's where it's going to be your um, line that you're going to do so that it can get a good line in that crease. And did I turn this around on me? There's the ought. Oh, yes, I did. And this happens. Rolled the tape on me. So now when I grabbed it, I put a line on the on, on the wrong side. So not a problem. I just do it on this side. So now when I grab it at any time, I know that's going to be my barra. So I'm not going to be too worried about it. Mark it with a B. Uh, no, we're not for baby and me. Mark it with a B for Barra and me. And I said this was my waist. Now to save time, I'm just going to put a W on this. And then I'm going to give myself so that I can put my date, my, my name on here. So we need that out of the road. Now to show you, like I said, I just did tapes the other day. If you practice this enough and you do these enough, this took me maybe a half an hour to do all four tapes. And 
my length tape is obviously a lot shorter than the rest of them. I think my large my largest is uh, is my chest tape, and most people that's going to be the case. But not everybody, not everybody's built the same. But most people are built symmetrical. That's why this works. If you're making for someone uh, else and they have um, in one of the books in the notes, the author said and stated that he took copious notes of the women um, when he was doing gowns for them and had notes to go with their tapes because of idiosyncrasies in uh, a female body on that. Again, for the most part, we're symmetrical. Right is going to match left. But we all know and not every body part that is the case. And I try to say that as delicately as possible because I don't want to say it wrong. Okay. So I'll go through, like I said, Quickly, I think I only have about 20 minutes left. Ought to Barra. Crease. And that is Media. Ought media. And that is one quarto. Media Tabara. Hang on, I'm sorry. I turned it up so that I could show you the one part and I didn't turn it back down. Something I've got to practice on. So we did Barra, Ought to Barra, we got Media. Ought to Media gave us Un quarto, media tabara, gave us tre quarto, again, this one I have trouble with. Like I said, QQQ. Sometimes I get it that way. Sometimes if I use a little wider tape, I, I, I'm able to do it down the line uh, on an angle. As long as you know it. And the easiest way, like I said, is always put the three cues down. Because if you do a single cue and you're trying to do a pattern and it says QQQ, you can accidentally mess up and the goal is to do it as purely as possible without messing up at least for me it is and i made plenty of mistakes anyway so i think i have one tape here what i did was i did just this i brought my aunt up to the wrong spot. And when I did that, I ended up with uh, my um, my six out of place. 
And it's easy enough to do that. And also get your, forget the dozen or forget one. So it's always good to try and go in a pattern to do it. So that was ought, ought to quattro. It gives us octo, octava. Here we go with that fun one again. Grab, pull it up. Okay, so you've got three levels. This is where I screwed up last time. I brought it down and I stopped at, at the octo. Got it right on, folded it, marked it. And then I realized that I still had my aught down the, down the bottom and they were off. So I started over. And it's just a little bit off. And there we are. Okay. And bottom trough. And that's lower one. So that's one T. The upper one, like I said, you can freehand it across the top. And that's two T's. And the rest is just doing subdivisions from there. On to T. And that is S. Six. Ought to S. D for dozen or twelve. The decimal, the decimal, yeah. Hot to the D, the first one. That line again to the D. to the first line. And we're looking at one dado, one data, dose, and trick. As I said, you start getting to do these, you practice them, do them on your friends, do them, do them on anybody else that might want to know. And next thing you know, this took us what? Uh, five to 10 minutes on this one. 
So we're getting close towards the end, I do believe. I did say, I'm gonna put this up a little bit. A little bit more. Okay. I did say that we're using the same codes. That young lady there, that young lady there, you, you're using the same codes on each each one of your own. And, you, and uh, it's like, how can that be? This is how the pattern in the book gives you letter code for the uh, front piece from the shoulder to the front of the doublet as S, the shoulder seam as S, down the front as QQQ, at the chest T. And at the waist, it should be a waist tape, or sometimes they go, and this is on an angle, and it's T-I-I. -I. The way this is set up, is just like Roman numerals, okay? If the smaller unit, the I-I, the T, is behind it, you add it. If it's in front, you subtract it. So you have T and it's this measurement across here. You measure the T and then you add II. But as you see this curves in here, this is your, your uh, semi back seam. It's, uh, uh, it's your side, but towards the back. So this here was actually this Severin, measurement. Severin, can you raise it up? We, we yeah. have are right. seeing the bottom of the pattern. Oh, perfect. That TII was actually the curvature. I'm going to back up a little bit. Now, I did two of them. And these are the actual tapes that I did them from. They are actual people. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. That would be me. Because it's my best friend and my wife. But I'm not saying that. You don't know that. Um, one being a little larger in the chest, the other being taller. Use QQQ from the same point. Now the same point is actually when you do when you do something, and I'm not getting into um, teaching. Uh, pattern making because that is Master Jose's thing. He he gives lessons on that. You pay for them. But what you do when you're doing this, if you do it out of the book, is you do a T across the top, cross down, right angle, and that's where you work from. That's that's your starting point. From that point is where all your measurements will work off of, and go from there. So the T was the starting point was up in here. The S curve was ah, wrong side. Was from the O to the S. This is the chest. It was actually the uh, the length on that. Each one, what it works is anything up and down. Is usually length, usually across upper body, chest, cross waist, waist, cross lower body, hips. That, that just just like a, a regular pattern would be. So my friend who was taller started here. That's how hers, her point of her doublet comes all the way down here. The other young lady who is larger chested, but shorter, has a, a larger 
doublet front and a shorter body here. Now, this works out, and now I have uh, uh, one thing that I want to show real quick here. These were their measurements. Lady A, 48 inch chest. She was 70 inches tall. Well, that's not right because we don't use the height of a person. We use half their height. So Lady B was 54 inches tall, or 54 inch chest with a height of 63. Like I said, she was shorter. So when I did her height tape, I did these mathematically. So and that so I got 31 and a half for for that tape that and if I measure those off of the tape and of course you can do that too to do your length tape is actually know your measurement divide it down take your regular regular tape and run it from your eye up mark your barra and go from there now, I understand we might have some people who are here that might be from uh, Australia or Germany that use um, uh, centimeters, meters, and such. So here, chest was 122, height was 178. So that would mean the length here would be 89 centimeters. And for Lady B, one thirty seven and one sixty brings you down to eighty. We can see that. I'm hoping you can see that. So this does work. And I um, think I'm at the point where do you have questions? Do you need the designations, the letter designations, uh, what they're called again, uh, paperwork up there? What can I help you with? Boy, quiet bunch. I like that, actually. Hi, my name is Nancy. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Try it again. Okay. Um, I get a little closer, I can hear you. I was wondering if there are any directions to deal with strong asymmetries, whether front, back, or side to side, because the Barra tape is very symmetrical. Um, and a lot of people are, but you know, I have like my, my boobs stick out a lot more <laughs> than my back. And I know from um, like Victorian tailoring, the sizes of the front and back are very different. So does any of the Italian tailoring take that into account? And if so, how? Honestly, that I, I don't know uh, going into the tailoring on that. I do know that from here, you would want to take copious notes. Now, um, I have a shoulder replacement, so I do have a little bit of a drop on here. It's not enough for me for my doublets to worry about, but I do know friends that have had uh, situations where they have a big droop, and that's where... Um, my notes go where I say, okay, a normal drop from shoulder blade 
to our, our, our neck joint to uh, shoulder joint, no, normal drop is about two, two and a half, three inches. I had to adjust his right side to go down to four and a half inches. So when I did his pattern, I did a left side normal and the right side I had to adjust, but I had to take the tape and put it on to make sure that the distance from here to that joint where he had the, the drop on there that I covered that and I didn't turn and say, oh, we'll just, we'll just drop it down. Well, I just moved that in. That's where you take notes on it. Um, like uh, some women are uh, larger on one side than the other. Again, taking notes to notice that uh, when you do women's doublets. Now I do basically front, straight front. And they seem to work out because I, I, I make bodies for them underneath uh, on that for my wife and, and uh, friend. So they are wearing bodies to hold everything straight. So everything's straight. In Matthew's second book, where he's showing how a uh, pattern actually uh, flows with a woman's body, there is adjustments for larger, smaller, on that, the curvature as to how it comes around, how it comes in underneath uh, the under, under bust as, as far as the over bust in that. Um, there are some patterns in it. Uh, again, the Italian book, I have not seen the whole book. All I've seen is some pictures that have been on there. And to be honest with you, most of them were showing me tents for patterns for tents. Um, so I don't know beyond that. I'm hoping that someone uh, here will know more about that, that I can go back over some of the um, classes then, because uh, I'm going to have to be away tomorrow. I'm hoping to try and get Chikara's, uh, Charetta's uh, class, because she contacted me. She says, I'm doing a class about uh, the, un the uh, underwear, the bloomers, and I'm doing it off of the barra system. So it would be really good if people knew how to make a barra tape to work with. So that's why I'm a precursor to her um, event or her, her class, which is tomorrow at five or six uh, on that. But um, I'm gonna be gone most of the day tomorrow uh, and then again tomorrow night. So I'm hoping to catch all the classes on that. And I'm hoping someone does have that information. I do mostly German and English. I have done Spanish because of this, but I have not done much Italian uh, on that. But when it comes down to the tape itself and that, they're the same. They work out the exact same on there. I hope that helped you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. How are we doing? 947, 950 is when I'm supposed to stop, I'm, I'm sure of. So. I incorporated two classes together, this one here and the tape from my two separate classes at, uh, at for Penzik and that that I usually do. Um, so this worked out better for me this way because I could get into more detail where it needed to be. All right. I think that wraps it up. I, and our... And, uh, um, How's that pronounced? Anor. 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 Thank you very much for teaching this. This was really fascinating. I didn't know about the Bara system before this event, so this is really cool. Uh, um, and, and it's 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 fun. Now the next thing is I've got to learn how to get my tension right on my hand sewing because I've done hand sewing but I have trouble with tension sometimes. 
The heavier the material, the easier I'm done. Lightweight material, that's a different story. So it's Thank that, it's uh, some roughs, Noel. Uh, Noel, uh, I've, I've got his setup uh, to do. I have, I bought some beautiful linen that I'm afraid to touch right now. I'm practicing on cheap stuff. <laughs> I do that too. Well, thank you very, very much, Severin, for teaching this. Uh, the recording of this class will be um, posted on the website for the event and also probably linked as well in the um, Facebook for the event. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you all for uh, coming and listening to me jabber. <laughs> Thank you, Severin. This was a very, very useful class. It was really helpful to see somebody doing it with their hands.